everybody, this is Osprey from MyTruckCoach.com and in this video we're going to take a look at the different uh, bull and bear ETF and ETNs for the indexes, indices, uh, the different indexes for the uh, for the Dow Jones Industrial Average, the S&P 500, the Russell 2000, and then we're also going to look at uh, volatility, and so we're going to check out uh, um, VIX and uh, a couple of different, um, you know, uh, UVXY, TVIX, and SVXY, and so yeah, and VXX. So first up, let's take a look at SPXL. This is the Drixon Daily S&P Bull three times, and so the, this tracks the uh, S&P times three. Um, so if the S&P uh, is up uh, uh, 1%, this should be up 3%, okay? So so basically this closed up 4% on Friday, so it made a very bullish move. It's been in a downtrend, and so it's currently trying to hold support from over here in February, the February lows. That's what it bounced off, this 39 support level. And it's also holding the 200-day simple moving average at 40. So basically it has to stay above 40 and also uh, you know so if you see a drop below the 200 day simple moving average that would be a major red flag it, you know it, it's closed uh, below that level three of the last five days if that level were, were to turn into resistance you would see a drop down to the 300 day simple moving average at 36.91 basically at 37 support level that was tested down here uh, on the uh, February low and, and so that that's people that are talking about the retest that that's the level that it would be taken to and, and, and you will know if that's going to happen or would likely happen if whether or not that 40 level holds. If the 40 level breaks and turns into resistance, that'll be a red flag and you could see 37 tested. Now, now that, that uh, EMA4 close above on Friday was bullish. That The last time it closed above EMA4 was on the 26th and it failed to stay above that level and pulled back. And so now what we're looking for is a bullish change in trend. Another close above that level and then a close above the next key resistance level, which is EMA8 at 4179. Uh, futures trading is down down tonight. Um, so uh, if there is a close back below EMA4 at 4086, that would be a red flag. It needs to stay above that level. If it closes back back below that level, it will be a risk to hold. We're looking for a potential uh, uh, bullish change in trend here. Um, it did form this uh, bullish one white soldier reversal pattern on the 26th. So that pattern is still in play. We'll see if it can get confirmed. Um, you know, th This is a, a tough call here. It has to stay above EMA4. Stocks in a down trend are, are difficult to reverse. Uh, if you look here at the SPXL 15 minute chart, you can see it got above several key levels on Friday. Okay, so so it, it closed Thursday down here uh, below the middle Bollinger Band, which is the dotted purple line, and it got above that level on Thursday uh, at the start of the day, and then it got above the green and, and, the, and the gold lines. That's the 50 and 100 simple moving averages, and so that was really bullish. If it can stay above those two levels and then also stay above the middle Bollinger Band currently at 41.21, basically stay above 41, that would be a, a good sign that it wants to push higher. Now, if it drops below those levels and then definitely if it gets back below the 50 simple moving average if you see it drop below 40 50 that would be a major red flag and you'd be looking at a retest of the recent lows uh, if it pushes to the upside what you want to see is a break of this descending resistance line so that, that that's right around 42 and that's also the high close uh, 4190 was the high close at three o'clock uh, on Thursday it has to break those levels and then it has to get above the 200 simple moving average at 4222 that's the big level to break on the chart failed to break that level, and that would be, uh, you know, that, that, that this was signaling a temporary top on Thursday. So it's got to break the zone to head higher. Fail to break that level, and it could consolidate. Now, if you look at SPXS, this is the, the bear three times, the S&P 500 bear three times. So if the S&P 500 is going down, this goes up. And so if, uh, you know, the markets are under pressure tomorrow, this could bounce. As you can see here, it, it, it pulled back on Thursday. It formed a red candle, and it's bouncing off of this 100 uh, day simple moving average at 29 and EMA 13 at 2890 support zone. That's the orange and gold lines. If it can hold those levels, and it's also holding EMA 8 there at, at 2943. If it can hold these support levels, that, that would be a good sign. Now, if it dropped below 2890, that would be a red flag, and you could see it drop down here to test that middle Bollinger Band, that 28 support zone. You know, there is an unfilled gap down here uh, between uh, high of day in this candle and low of day in this candle. Now, now if support does 
threshold, that 100-day simple moving average, you know, that does signal the uptrend is intact. And then what you want to see to the upside is this high close horizontal resistance level from, from uh, um, back here on the, uh, uh, what is that, 23rd, and then and then this descending uh, resistance line. Okay, so that, that those are both lined up at the same level, that 3150 level, a break above that and 3250s on deck, and then above 3250, and then you'd be looking at a 200-day simple moving average at 3361 resistance test. If you look at SPXS on the 15-minute chart, you can see it closed Thursday in a downtrend. Okay, so it's below the middle Bollinger Band. It, it's uh, um, it, it's it broke below the middle Bollinger Band on on, uh, on Thursday, and that that did signal um, a downside risk. You know, it came up here and it hit the uh, descending resistance zone and failed to break. It has to break this. Uh, you know, basically 3050 level right now. Uh, it, it, right now, though, it, it's down here holding the 200 simple moving average at 29.19. So it needs to stay above 29. If that level were to break, then you could see it come down, test that that low close from the 27th, and then also that that 300 day simple moving or 300 simple moving average at 28.39. So that would be the downside risk. It dropped down to that 28.50 resistance zone. It, it, if that middle, it, what it has to do is has to get back above the middle Bollinger Band that's currently at 29.54. So we get it back above 29.50, and then once it's back above that that 150 simple moving average it averages and above that 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 $30 level, that would be a signal the chart's heating up again. If it were to break out above this descending resistance line, that 30.50 level, that would be very very bullish. Okay, let's look at UDOW. Okay, this is Pro Shares Ultra Pro uh, Dow 30, and so basically this is tracking the the uh, the Dow Jones Industrial Average, and, and so. Uh, uh, th th this has been in a downtrend as well. Um, it, it, it has this uh, kind of falling wedge type pattern where you have uh, descending support and uh, descending resistance. And so one of these two levels is going to break. It, it's been testing the, the support zone. Okay, it needs to hold the 200-day simple moving average at 80.19. That's the red line. You notice how all these candles bounced off that level. It was able to hold that level the last, uh, you know, several several trading days. Now, now if that level were to break, that would signal major downside risk. You know, you would see this uh, descending support line down in 78, 77 tested, and then you could possibly see a drop all the way down to that that 300 uh, day, day simple moving average. That's the big drop and correction that 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 some people are looking for. Um, you know, the, the uh, you know is that going to happen before earnings seasons, or who, who knows what's going to happen here? We just have to follow the charts, and, and then uh, w what has to happen to the upside is it, it's it closed back above EMA four. That that's the pink line. It needs to hold that level 83.55 if it were to close back below that level it would no longer be in play for a long trade it would be a risk to hold it has to get above EMA 8 notice how it closed right at that level that's the 85 resistance zone if it can get above 85 then, then, then that could see you know then it could get moving and it has to get above EMA 13 at 86.91 it, it, a new uptrend will not begin until it gets above 90.12 so it has a lot of work to do notice there is a gap up here between low of day and this candle and high of day and this candle so so, so if it did get above EMA 13, we'd be looking for a potential gap fill. Uh, so, so once again, major downside risk if it fails to stay above 83.50. A drop below 80 would be a, a huge uh, red flag signaling that, that it is breaking down and we are going going lower. Uh, if it holds that 83.50 and breaks above resistance, then the bounce continues. If you look at the 15-minute chart, you can see it did close uh, in a bullish uptrend. So it did break above the middle Bollinger Band, above the 50 and 100 simple moving averages, the gold and green lines, and then it closed right at that, that middle Bollinger Band. It needs to stay above 84.69. Um, you know, if, if there's possibly a gap down, if, you know, if futures do, uh, you know, if, if tonight's futures trading does lead into uh, a, a red open tomorrow, then you could see a gap down type situation. If that does happen, uh, it needs to hold the 150 simple moving averages. They're both around the same level as 83.22 to 83.81. If these levels were to fail to hold, then the chart would be broken again, and that would signal more downside risk. It, it, you know, if there was a gap down and then it bounced off those levels and they held, it could get going again to the upside. Now, now the big level of the break is going to be this 200 simple moving average resistance zone at 85.85. Notice that's the uh, high, lined up with the high close at 86. If you can get above that, then 87 will be the big level to break. Well, you know, it has to get above that 300 simple moving average at 88.15 on the 15-minute chart to get a, a, a strong up 
trend going. Okay, if you look at STOW, uh, this is the uh, Pro uh, Ultra Pro Short Dow 30, and so this is uh, what you trade if the if the Dow is going down. Uh, this is one of the vehicles that you can trade, and so you can see it was down three percent because the the Dow was up on Friday, but but it's still in an uptrend. Okay, so it's above the gold line. As long as that level is holding the the 100 day simple moving average at 1937 it is signaling more upside potential it's been you know just working on turning that level into support if it can break above this 2050 resistance zone then you're looking at the high close here on the 23rd as the big level to break you know a break above that that would be a clear signal that it wants to head higher and you could see a run up here to that 200 day simple moving average at 2368 you know if, if the markets do correct and they and they and they break down that then this this resistance could break and you could see that that 200 tested now now if uh, we get a pre-earnings rally and the markets try to run then this would likely pull back and then you would see uh, this middle Bollinger Band tested it has to hold the middle Bollinger Band at 1882 to keep the uptrend going if that level were to break it would signal uh, you know possible start of a downtrend you can see here there was a symmetrical triangle pattern that formed there was descending resistance and then there was ascending support and so the, the uh, break above the the uh, d descending resistance line, um, you know, two weeks ago, when that last week or the week before, that was a big signal that, that it was breaking out to the upside. It needs to stay above those levels to keep heading higher. If you look at the 15 minute chart, you can see it did correct. It pulled all the way back and it tested this 300 simple moving average support zone down around 1913. Um, you know, it, it needs to keep holding that level. It's trying to get back above the 200 simple moving average that's at 1955. And so it'll be bullish if it can stay above that level and the middle Bollinger Band at 1958. So basically, if it's above 1960 on, on uh, Monday, that'll signal that it's possibly in play, and then and then you know that's trying to get back in play. And then if you see it break above the, this 150 simple moving average resistance level, notice how that that's lined up with the the descending resistance. You had uh, you know all, all the tops hit hit this level, and, and it's basically around twenty dollars. If, if you see it break out and it's and it's trading in the twenties for S Dow, that, that that's going to be your signal that it's that that it you know likely wants to head higher and then you'd want to use that level as your stop loss you don't want to see it drop back below that 50 simple moving average once it uh, once resistance breaks okay if you look at TNA this is the small cap bull three times and so if the Russell uh, 2000 is uh, um, up you know this should be up uh, three times that move so you can see it closed up three percent on uh, um, on on Thursday and so it's trying to heat up it, it came down and it tested the 200 day simple moving average support level on the daily chart at 6040 notice that's lining up with ascending uh, support as well and so this is a huge level to hold if it were to break that 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 200 day simple moving average and close below it's likely to drop down and test that that 300 day simple moving average at 6025 similar to how it did in February you know that that's what pe some people are calling for it, it, as you can see it's been trying to make higher highs um, you know the uh, or higher lows and so you can see there was a low here it came up and then it made a, a, a low to here and then now it's made a higher low so so if you're getting and, and then on the way up you know you have a high and then a higher high and so if this low pattern holds where it's making higher lows, then you'd be looking for a higher high as well. And so th this this is the bottom of the current pattern. And, and so support has to hold here. If it were to break, then, then the bears that, that are calling for the correction would win. But if it holds, what you want to see, it closed back above EMA4. It has to stay above 67. If it drops below 67, that's going to be a red flag. You don't want to see another close below that level. The upper wick there, you can see the profit taking. People did not trust that rally. Um, there's a lot going on at the end of the, the month, end of the quarter, last trading day there of March. You know, lot was happening it did pull back it needs to get above the EMA 8 at 68.55 if you see it close above that level that signal okay yeah it's actually uh, this is in play for, for the reversal that's what's happened on the other reversals right they followed through with white candles so we're, we you know the the, the previous uh, bounces have not followed through here during this pullback and so, you know, we're looking for a bullish change in trend. And if it gets above that, that 100 day simple moving average at 729, um, that would be a, a, a bullish signal. It has to get above the middle Bollinger Band all the way, here, all the way up here at 72 to get a new uptrend going. If you look at the 15 minute chart, 
you can see it came down, uh, bounced, and then it made a lower high. Um, it, it's, it needs to get above this this uh, uh, high close from, from Thursday, and then back above the middle Bollinger Band, currently at 67.95. Basically, it needs to get back above 68. If 68 is resistance on, on Monday, that will be a red flag. And then it needs to hold the two key support levels here, the 150 simple moving averages. If you see it drop down and it's trading at 66.50 or below, that's going to be a major red flag. That's going to put signal that TZA is in play. Okay, the in, the inverse of TNA, and th that's the bear ETF. I'll show you that next. Now, if it breaks out to the upside, what you're looking for is a break above 69, and then a break above this big resistance level. You know that this uh, it's this uh, high close here. It was a, a big resistance on the 23rd, the 26th, and the 27th. It's all lined up with the 200 simple moving average. So basically, if it can get above that 69.50 into that 70 level that then TNA would be looking uh, bullish and then you'd be talking about a run up to that 300 simple moving average and that 71 resistance zone. Um, yeah, it's all about getting it back above that middle Bollinger Band right now and holding support. So it's going to be really interesting at the open. You know, if it were to gap down uh, and, and it opened below that 50 and 100 simple moving average and they turned into resistance, that would be an instant mm -hmm. signal that, okay, yeah, the bears are in control today. So if the bears are in control on Monday, then you want to look at TZA. This is the the Drixion daily small cap bear three times. And, and so the, it, if the markets are down on Monday for the, the Russell 2000, this will be up. And, and so as you can see, this was down 3% on Thursday. Um, it, it has an uptrend going on, on the daily chart. You know, it had this, uh, uh, you know, it spiked over here and it had a downward channel going and, and it bounced. It formed a, well, you know, a double bottom type bounce down here. It, it held that 1050 support zone and then it got back up above the middle Bollinger Band. It, as long as it's staying above the middle Bollinger Band at 1130. It candles are forming above that level. It signals the uptrend still intact. Now, if it were to drop back below that level, similar to back here, that would signal downside risk. It would signal, you know, possible downtrend starting again. Now, now it's also holding that 50 uh, day simple moving average, the green line here. That's a really big support level to hold, you know, 1165. It needs to stay above that level and then break the 100 day simple moving average at 1211. Notice how uh, all these candles right here, uh, these three white candles, all closed right above the 100-day simple moving average. The same with this candle right here. And, and, and they all failed to stay above. Um, it was a similar resistance from back here in February. It was the 100 that really gave uh, you know TZA a lot of problems. If it can finally turn that level into support, that's going to be your clear signal. Okay, yeah, the small cap bears are clearly in control and this thing wants to run back up to the 200-day simple moving average at 1381. It's all about the, turning this 100-day simple moving average into support. So above, you know, uh, above this 12.11 level, that signals upside potential for the bears, for the small cap bears. And then if it, if it what would be a red flag is if it were to get back into this previous channel and it, and it closed back below this red line, it closed right at that red line. If it got back below that level, got below the 50 day simple moving average, that would signal downside risk. If you look at the 15 minute chart for TZA, you could see here it did close back above the middle Bollinger Band. So it's trying to get a new uptrend going. Um, so, so it needs to hold the, the middle Bollinger Band at 11.75. Okay, so that's the dotted purple line here. It's also the 20 simple moving average. If it could stay above that level, then it could possibly get an uptrend going. What it needs to do to officially be back in play is if it can get back above this 50 simple moving average at 11.99, above 12 would be bullish. If it got back above 12, then it could get cruising again. It would need to break the high close horizontal resistance level from the 28th. That was at, at uh, just around 12.40 resistance zone. Um, you can see the descending resistance line. If it got above 12, 15 and was trading above that level that would be very bullish as well you know so it, if it closes though back below that middle Bollinger Band and then it were to drop below the 200 simple moving average you can see this red line here it bounced right off that level on Thursday then you're likely to see a drop down to the 300 simple moving average of 1138 okay so let's take a look at volatility so uh, what's interesting are the uh, what's interesting tonight in futures trading is we have the uh, indices are under pressure and so they're all red currently, but but VIX is red as well. So we have we have the the, the this is the futures uh, volatility index, and this is showing Thursday's results. But but the uh, right currently, well, the last time I looked, uh, VIX was red along with the indices, and usually you would see uh, VIX green when, when the indices are down. So that's interesting. Um, you know, it's not you know they're not pricing a lot of volatility tonight into the at least the last time I looked right before I made this video in, in, into the. Uh, 
open tomorrow. Um, but so keep an eye on uh, on the VIX. And so what we're looking at here is is a, is an uptrend that that it's been been trying to start. You could see it, this is a chart that I made previously, and it broke above the descending resistance line. It had ascending support, descending resistance, and then it broke above it. And it's been turning this middle Bollinger Band and 50-day simple moving average currently at about $19 into support. If it stays above 19, that would be bullish. That would signal, okay, yeah, it's still happening. The, the uptrend is intact. And then if it were to drop below that level, that would be a red flag. That would signal, you know, that 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 volatility is cooling down and that it could take a breather and pull back and possibly retest this 100-day simple moving average at 1465. Now, now to the upside, the big level the break is going to be this close from back here on the 23rd. If it can get back above that level, that would be a signal, okay, yeah, the volatility is really cooking again. And, and then, you know, we could see a retest of up here into the, you know, those 30s. And, but it has to get above, you know, what we're calling the 25 resistance zone. If you see uh, VIX futures back above 25, that would be a major red flag that volatility is back. It's smoking. I mean, I, I think that in order to have a, uh, a correction that you would need to have a VIX, uh, you know, at least test those levels, at least get above this this level here, the, the prior high from the 23rd. Uh, may, maybe not, but but you would think that, that VIX would need to be uh, cruising higher if we were heading into correction mode. And, and so it's right there at that 50-yard line, that middle Bollinger Band and 50-day simple moving average. If it bounces off that level, you know, it could keep channeling in between 19 and 25 and, and, and uh, you know, uh, bounce off and, and uh, you know, kind of how the market's been bouncing back and forth. If it gets, though, below that that 50-day simple moving average, that should be a signal that that, that the earnings season is, is heating up. Since we're coming in on April 13th into the start of uh, first quarter earnings season uh, reporting, and, and so, uh, you know, everybody's talking about the record earnings season, you know, uh, is that priced in right now with the uh, current uh, price? to earnings ratio for the uh, S&P 500 and the Dow Jones and uh, for, for the Russell 2000, we will see. Um, we'll, we'll have to see after this big pullback. Um, let's look at uh, the VIX here at VIX, okay? And th th this is um, the... the uh, uh, we, we, okay, so this is the VIX weekly chart. So it's the same uh, the same futures that I just showed you. And, 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 but this is the weekly chart. So each candle represents one week of trading. And you can see it's currently trading above all the moving averages, above the 50, 100, 200, 300 week moving averages, and also above the middle Bollinger Band. So it has a, a, an uptrend going right now. It's in a good uptrend. It just has to break resistance. You can see how this smoothed out the data from that weekly chart or daily chart. And, and here's that 25 resistance zone, okay, from, from last you know from two weeks ago it needs to get above that level and then you have the the thir you know that that 30 zone back on deck that 29 level the big high close from february uh, if if it right now it's trying to hold ema4 that's currently at 1994 and, and so if that level were to break that would be your clear signal okay yeah earnings season's heating up volatility is cooling down and then you would see the ema4 at 1871 tested similar to over here you know after the big spike there was a cool down you know it, it, okay so there was a big two, two week spike here two two uh, a big week spike and then a cool down too big spike, you know, are we going to get, you know, we had a cool down last week. Is it going to get continue cooling down or, or is, is volatility going to heat up again this week? You know, there's a lot of economic data coming out, a lot of, uh, uh, of news this week. It's really jam packed every single day of the week. So there's a lot of uh, data that's going to be coming out that could move the markets. Okay. If you look at uh, VXX here, you can see this is the, uh, this is the uh, S and P 500 VIX short term futures ETN and, and it does trade options. And, and this, is, uh, you know, it, it, as you can see, it was down 7%. You know, it was, you know, heating, heating up. It's been trying to turn the 300-day simple moving average into support. I think right now that's the most important uh, average or most important level for, for VXX right now. If it's above 48.33, above the 300-day simple moving average, that signals upside potential. You can see here three of the last five candles have been uh, above the 300-day simple moving average. You have three white candles and then two red candles. It, it's it's working on trying to turn this level into support. Is it going to turn into resistance like February? And, and then with earnings season coming up, you know, volatility is going to cool down? Or, 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 you know, are we heading into, uh, you know, some more craziness and, and the 300-day simple moving average is going to turn into support and we're going to break out up into the 50s? Uh, you, know, uh, you know, right now at 47, what you're looking at to the upside is a big 
level is that 51 level, the, the high close from, from last Wednesday. If it can get above that level, then 55 is the big level to break all the way up here at 55. Now, if the 300-day simple moving average and 48 turns into resistance next week, uh, you know what, what you're likely to see is, is uh, the candles to work back into the bands. And, and you could see them work back down to this middle Bollinger Band at 43.79. Uh, that that level has to hold to keep the uptrend going. Uh, you know, it would have to break uh, EMA 13 at 45.89. You know, that 46 level is going to be a big support level. But uh, yeah, keep an eye on the 300 day simple moving average this week. And, and if it, you know, it remains resistance or it turns into resistance, that's going to signal the markets are probably going to heat up. And if it turns into support, that could signal the markets are due for some more pressure. Okay, let's look at UVXY. Okay, so this is, uh, you know, a way to, uh, I think this does. Uh, I think it maybe does two times the uh, the, the VIX move. Uh, you know, as you can see here, this was uh, yeah yeah. The, I forget they, they've redone the calibrations on all these. Now now it's uh, uh, what is this one now? It's like I think I think now I, I think now this is uh, one and a half times. Okay, yeah, because they recalibrated. And, and so anyways, uh, UVXY, is, uh, it hit that 200-day simple moving average. Okay, so it, so it was heating up last week. It hit the 200-day simple moving average at 2126. That's the big level to break, and it pulled back. If, if you see it close back above that level, that would be very bullish for UVXY. And then you could see it retrace back up to that 28 level. You know, you have some resistance around 23, 24, but, but there's not much after that. You know, it could really get moving if it turned that 200-day simple moving an average into support. If that level remains resistance, then then it's the profit taking zone, and, and you would likely see it pull back down to that middle Bollinger Band at 1674. It needs to hold that level and the 50-day simple moving average at 1587 to keep this uptrend going. If it were to drop below both those levels, you could see that 100-day simple moving average at 14 tested again. You know, it is in an uptrend right now. It's trading above that middle Bollinger Band. It did close back below EMAs four, and and it, it closed below EMA. EMA4 and uh, where is it at? It's uh, closed right at EMA8. So it needs to really bounce off this level. As you can see, that level has been holding since it since it uh, you know it started trading above on this current uptrend. And so if it were to uh, for some reason EMA8 at 1853 turned into resistance, if you see UVXY struggling on Monday with 1850 resistance zone, that's going to be your red flag. Okay, yeah, it's cooling down, and, and it could possibly you know retest that 17 support zone. Okay, so look at TVIX. This is the uh, two times VIX short term ETN. And, and so, yeah, this is the two times. So, so now with uh, UVXY not, not paying off like it used to, and SVXY, uh, like I think it's like a half a, a half a convert, half a point move. Um, it, it, TVIX ha has the most uh, MOMO, but it can also work against you if you're long, and, and this was down uh, 13%. And so just keep that in mind. Anytime you have a times two or times three, it can work for you if you're on the right side of the trade, but if you're on the wrong side of the trade, it can work against you. And, and so for TVIX, it, it, you know, it, it hit that same resistance zone. It hit the 200-day simple moving average. It needs to break 11.45. Notice that that level was hit multiple times in the February run, and it failed to break, and it signaled the top and and the volatility uh, topping out last time also was a signal that the, the the markets were bottoming and so is that the same thing that's happening here you know we have volatility topping out possibly at the 200 day simple moving average is that once again signaling that, that we're at a market bottom or is volatility going to break out above that 200 day simple moving average and then get running and then you'd be talking about the 300 day simple moving average at 20 23 you know are we headed to uh, some big uncertainty leading into these this monster earnings season or, or it, you know are things cooling down are things going to chill out a little bit and the market's going to uh, you know take a breather from the craziness you know that that remains to be seen you know we'll, we'll have to see what happens just have to keep following the charts if, if the share price does continue pulling back here it needs to hold the middle bollinger band and the 50 day simple moving average that 836 to uh, $8 support zone. If it were to drop below, then you'd see that 100-day simple moving average at 733 tested again, similar to how it did earlier in March. Okay, it has to keep that middle Bollinger Band, you know, hold that middle Bollinger Band to keep this uptrend going. It basically, what happened is it, it hit the top in February, came down, and then it, and then it topped out here in, in March, and then it came back, and now it's hitting that same level that it hit in March. You know, it's the exact same resistance level. It has to break out above 11. You know, if it's struggling with 11, that's going to be a red flag. And then right now it needs to hold nine. If it drops below nine, you're looking at 850 on deck. 
Okay, so w w if volatility starts to uh, decline, you know, one way to play uh, um, uh, is, is to short volatility, all right? So this is pro share short uh, VIX, short term. And, and this is, uh, you know, uh, a very similar instrument to XIV, the, 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 the short uh, uh, volatility um, instrument that, that it totally blew up and, and went, uh, you know, went bust. Um, this still trades, uh, but they slowed it down big time. It, it, it moves a, a, a fraction of the the uh, of what the VIX moves. You have to look it up. Um, I mean, this did close up four percent here, so that was a strong move. But I think it's a half a per, a half of what the uh, VIX does. So if the uh, VIX was up, uh, if the VIX was down eight uh, percent, this would be down four percent. So so this goes up when the VIX goes down. And, but but it's only going to move a half. A, so so to make it simple for you, if the VIX were were down one percent, this would be up a half a percent. Okay, and then it keeps moving with that conversion rate. And I'm I'm pretty sure that's correct. And, and then as you can see here, the 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 Bollinger bands are super tight. Um, it, it's just been traded in this crazy tight channel with with, with moving um so, so fractionally. You know the, there there aren't dramatic moves in either direction. So it's basically been in a very tight channel. Um, you really have to trade off of the uh, intraday charts uh, what, what you're looking for though is for a break above the the top or below the bottom of the channel um, you know currently you can see it's been channeling out for multiple weeks if it were to break out right now the big level is the orange line in the middle Bollinger band it's current they're currently converging there at 1230 if it were to get above 1230 above both of those levels that would be your clear signal that okay volatility has totally cooled down it's it's finally that that short volatility trade is back on the table at least short term as long as those levels held and it would just be a sign of, of a change in trend for the markets you know if you look over here and if you look at uh, SVXY a very long term chart you will see that it was in a bullish uptrend for an extended period of time and, and so since it dropped it, it's been trying to get back above that middle Bollinger Band right currently it's below it did close back above EMA4 at 11.61 if it can get uh, back above the EMA 8 at 1179, that would be bullish. So you want to see it back above that, that line line. It hasn't been above that level, okay, since back here when it was trying to turn the middle Bollinger Band into support in the middle of March. Now, if you look at the 15 minute chart, you can see here it heated up on Friday. It got back above the middle Bollinger Band and above that uh, 50 day simple or 50 uh, simple moving average over here at the start of the day. So, so this was your, your signal that it was back in play. It was heating back up. And then it got back above the, the 100 simple moving average, the gold line. And so, so it's really heating up right now. It closed with a strong chart. And as you can see, it closed at high of day. So, so, so vol you know, short volatility was, was extremely strong into the close, even with the market uh, selling off. And so that that's very interesting. You know, you would think that that this would have sold off as well. You know, that volatility would have spiked into the close with, with the market selling off. If you would have, if you've checked out my other videos um, uh, that, that I've done over the weekend, you'll see, especially with all those technology stocks, with all these stocks across the board and ETFs. You know, they had sell-offs into the close. You can see this sold off, started to the at, at 3:15 and 3:30, but boom, it had a big push. And, and so that that's just an interesting observation. Um, if it can get above that that 200 simple moving average at 1187 notice how that's lining up with the high closes here on the 26th and 27th then that and then also over here on the, the the 23rd that would be your clear signal okay yeah it's ready to head higher and then 12 would be back on deck in that 300 simple moving average all right thank you very much for viewing this video it's going to be a very interesting week there's going to be a lot going on we're going to see if uh thursday was just a head fake or if uh you know there's going to be follow through a lot lot happening I, I really appreciate you uh, viewing the, the video. Thanks for taking the time. And um, uh, please uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Thank you so much. And uh, come check out our chat. I'll post the link below the, the YouTube video. Thank you.